Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fifth ever episode of On the Gridiron. I am your host, Matthew Heiserman, and today we have an awesome episode where we will be recapping the Commanders' Week 3 victory against the Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, the Commanders traveled to Cincinnati to face off against the Bengals, despite the odds not being in their favor, they came out victorious by a score of 38 to 33. And overall, a lot to be impressed by, and just showed great signs of hope for the future. And I mean, let's get right into it now. I want to start with Jaden Daniels. He looks like an absolute beast out there. And uh, one stat I wanted to mention he had the highest completion percentage out of any rookie quarterback uh, of all time. He got 91 per his completion percentage was 91, which beat out Dak Prescott in, I believe, 2016. Just absolutely absurd. Shows you how accurate he was. And not only that, it just shows how much he's already grown since week one. Week one, I would definitely say he wasn't as comfortable in the pocket. He relied on running the ball a lot, left the pocket when he didn't have to. And we saw a little bit more uh, passing in week two, looked a little more comfortable, but still some flaws, still a lot of running in week two against the Giants. And yes, did Daniels run this game? Yeah, he ran... Uh, he had 12 carries, got a touchdown, 30-something yards, but it didn't look like he was forcing any of those runs. It looked like he used them appropriately, and you could see how much he grew from a passing perspective this game. Uh, we saw he, was, he was, wasn't really airing out the ball in the first two games. We saw it in the preseason with uh, Diame Brown, that one play. And we immediately after that, we knew that he could. Uh, you know, he has that power. He can air out the ball, but we didn't really see it. We saw it this game with some plays to Terry McLaurin. We'll get to those later. But overall, Daniels was meant for these Monday night games. When all the pressure is on him, he will deliver. Uh, you can tell all his teammates already love him. They trust him. Uh, I think he obviously has given Commanders fans a lot of hope, similar hope to uh, when RG3 was a rookie and what he was doing. And I'd say Daniels has all right, is, is even better than uh, RG3 was in that rookie season. So just overall, a lot to be excited about. This is also uh, the first game that any NFL team since 1940, yes, you heard that correctly, 1940 has not had to punt the ball or have a turnover in the game. While it might not seem like it, this game was a historic performance for the Commanders. And, of course, Daniels got his first passing touchdown of his career. He got two against, he got two rushing touchdowns against the Buccaneers week one, got a rushing touchdown uh, this past Monday night before he got this passing touchdown. So he already had three rushing touchdowns before this one passing touchdown. It was to offensive lineman Trent Scott, definitely not someone who I expected, obviously, to get a touchdown this game. But, of course, we will take it. A touchdown is a touchdown and a great one to start off your career. And, I mean, just overall, an amazing, an amazing game from Daniels shows so much growth since uh, week one. Shows how competitive he is, how well he's going to do in the future, and he also he also slid this game, which was of course progress. But love to see what he was doing out there, and uh, definitely clutch when it mattered, especially to Terry McLaurin, which I want to talk about now. Of course, McLaurin had a very, very slow start to the season, barely doing anything in the first two weeks. And he came off four consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. So immediately, it was kind of just surprising to see him struggle this much. But I was able to talk to uh, John Keim, the ESPN reporter for the Commanders, ask him if he thought that this was... Uh, 
just if there was someone to blame or if it was overall just getting used to a new system. And I think that's really what it was, getting used to a new system. Because, of course, you could tell from day one that Daniels and McLaurin were building chemistry. But it really, they were working on it. They couldn't really connect during the first two weeks. They finally were able to connect very well. This game, uh, week one, they, we missed McLaurin for a touchdown or would have been a touchdown, a very long one. Uh, Daniels just overshot him. But he finally was able to get McLaurin active on a 55-yard completion that set them up in the red zone at around the five-yard line. Jaden Daniels ended up getting his one rushing touchdown off of that play. But I think that play specifically was just a big relief uh, as a Commanders fan, knowing, okay, Terry McLaurin is back. He can make a catch. He's not completely off. That's what we expect from a guy like McLaurin. And it was just nice to see him return to uh, what he has been doing in the past. And then he uh, he got that 27-yard touchdown, of course, as well, which might be uh, arguably the biggest play of his career. An amazing route got his uh, defender to just completely miss and he was still he was still very well covered came down with a great catch Jaden Daniels threw it right in the bread basket for Terry McLaurin and I mean he he ended the game four receptions 100 yards and a touchdown so those two plays were most of his yards he did have two other smaller receptions, and uh, keep in mind, Daniels earlier in the game before McLaurin got that 55-yard reception, uh, uh, Daniels missed him on what would have been a touchdown. Uh, McLaurin's defender slipped, and it left McLaurin wide open. Daniels overshot him downfield, way overshot him, just a miscommunication, I think. But that would have been another touchdown. But, of course, McLaurin, as we mentioned, made up for it. And on that last touchdown, 27 yards, uh, if, if you look at the play, Daniels got took a really hard hit after he got the ball off. So just good job getting the ball off uh, quick. And we mentioned, or I mentioned earlier how – he was more comfortable throwing that long ball, something we haven't seen uh, from him this, so far until last night. And he just showed how effective he can be. Lots of great signs from Terry McLaurin. Lots of great signs from Jaden Daniels. And uh, Luke McCaffrey also made some big plays. Of course, there's guys like Luke McCaffrey, uh, Noah Brown, who have been active, just not, you know, the main vocal point of this offense but of course McCaffrey got that big uh, play on fourth down to set them up really close to the end zone and uh, Noah Brown made some big catches Noah Brown he almost got a touchdown as well just didn't get his feet down into the end zone ended up being at the one yard line so they are obviously important to the team good when you need them uh again they're not they're not the main player they're not getting the most attention but they are making some important plays and I think overall it's just helpful to have guys like them on the team now after week one against the Buccaneers I don't want to keep going back to that game because it was really rough 37 to 20 but there were many questions about the team after that game and it's uh they included you know what was the main flaw of the team? I think the three categories that were really focused on were the wide receivers, the defensive line, and the secondary. And right now, where I'm going with this is I think that I can confidently say that the secondary is the main problem. Of course, we saw the wide receivers step up a lot this past uh, game. We saw Defensive line got two sacks. 
not an amazing performance, but they did definitely do better than how they have uh, so far in the season. But the secondary still struggled. Of course, the main thing that you think of uh, with that secondary this past game was Jamar Chase and his two touchdowns. The first one was uh, Mike Sanistrill on defense, and the second one was Benjamin St. Juiced. Now, the thing I really uh, paid attention to is that they were both one-on-one man coverage. And honestly, Jamar Chase is going to win that every time. If you have Jamar Chase one-on-one against a defender, it doesn't matter who it is. He's most likely going to win that. And it especially doesn't help when it's a rookie in Mike Sanistrill. And then the second one uh, against St. Juice. We, I thought that there could have been a safety back there to help because there just wasn't. Uh, he beat St. Juice, and I mean, he just got the easy touchdown after that. Definitely could have used a safety to help out there. Um, and I think I knew, I knew Jamar Chase was going to have a good game, of course, I did, but it's just how good he ended up doing it. I mean, those two touchdowns definitely hurt, but T. Higgins also came back. He did all right, didn't make any massive plays. But another thing that he did that I don't think many people are thinking about is he was a distraction overall on offense. Not to say he wasn't helpful. Of course he was helpful. But distraction is in he took another cornerback off of um, Jamar Chase, of course, every single play. And that left easier coverage on Jamar Chase. He was able to make a bigger difference. Um Andre Yosevash as well. He's not someone that you are as nervous about, but he's been very good. Got two touchdowns, I think, in week two. Got this past touchdown on this game. Not great coverage on that one touchdown that he did get. Yes, the defense recovered, but at that point, it was like a three-yard pass. So, I mean, if he created any separation, it was almost a guarantee that he was going to get that touchdown. And he did create separation on that play. So not great there. But overall, there were still some good plays on in the secondary. You know, uh, Sanistril made a big play, uh, some big plays. He got one big pass deflection, I remember. It was like a wide receiver screen, got a big pass deflection. Uh, Jeremy Reeves on a third down, I think it was, made a big play. So, yes. There were mistakes that were made, and they do have to make adjustments. But overall, I think that there is a lot of potential there. Of course, they are, um, they're still young. Quan Martin, still young. Sanistro, still young. Emmanuel Forbes, when he returns, um, he still obviously has a lot of improvements to make. But, and I, I am definitely regretting not taking Christian Gonzalez with that pick, and I was even last year. But the most we can hope for is that he just improves and really becomes a valuable quarterback on our team. But moving over to the next topic, that's going to be the running backs. And the reason I want to talk about the running backs is because they have really carried the offense so far, if you ask me, when the Offense has been slow at points this season. They've really been there to help. Of course, Robinson this past game got 16 carries, 33 yards, uh, and a touchdown that was on the ground. Got one reception for four receiving yards in the air. Eckler got three carries for 35 yards and a touchdown. He was also somewhat active uh, receiving. He got two receptions, I believe, for 22 yards. But I think, the, of course, they both got touchdowns on the ground. But the main thing that really stands out to me is the fact that Robinson got uh, 16 carries. Eckler got three carries. And so far, I think we've really been able to see that Robinson has been more used in the run game. Eckler has obviously been more used in the passing game. And uh, Eckler, of course, we have to bring up the fact he did uh, get a concussion. He was, He left the game went into the blue medical tent, ended up going to the locker room, tested him. He had a concussion, not what we wanted to really see. Um, But along with – 
So, yeah, hopefully he gets back soon. But along with the receiving aspect for Eckler, he's also been big uh, kick returning. Got a big kick return this game. I think it was 63 yards, if I'm correct. And then he also got a kick return touchdown against the Giants to open the game before that was taken back due to a flag. But he's definitely uh, shown some big plays as a kick returner and a lot to be excited about there. Robinson has so far, in my opinion, been one of the better running backs in the entire league. 206 rushing yards so far, of course, semi-active uh, receiving, but just been really good. Of course, big goal line threat, and I am expecting big things not only this year, but in the future for him. Uh, I don't know how much longer Eckler is going to be with us, but I think he's great. Third down, he is just another valuable option to have along with Robinson in the backfield. Um, so, and yeah, Eckler, he, he's not washed, I think. It's just he plays in a specific role now where he's not as big of a runner. He's much more of a receiver. Of course, I mentioned he's dabbled into the uh, the kick returning a little bit, but he's not washed. I think he just really did struggle uh, in his last year or two in Los Angeles. Of course, he suffered a few injuries, um, but there's still a lot to like about him. Now, before we wrap up this episode, we do have to break down the next few games for the Commanders coming up. In week four, they play the Cardinals. They're going to have to make those defensive adjustments at corner uh, in the secondary, especially against Marvin Harrison Jr., who has played great the past two games. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Then week five, we play the Browns. Week six, we play the Ravens. And then week seven, eight, and nine is pretty easy with the Panthers, Bears, and Giants. Overall, what do I think is the best possibility? Out of that, I think the best possibility is us going four and two. And I'd say that would be wins against the Browns, Panthers, Bears, and Giants. Of course, we could beat the Cardinals. We could beat the Ravens. After this win, uh, it shows that we can probably contend and compete with most teams in the NFL. But then again, there's also a lot of games where we should win against the uh, an easier team, but we don't. Like, for instance, that Browns game, we obviously should win that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, put up a really good fight or maybe even win that game. Same with the Bears game. Um, and the Giants, of course, recently they've been uh, mostly beating us in the uh, season series. They went, I think, 2-0 and last year against us, but we... Of course, already got that first win. We'll see what happens after that. But, uh, of course, being the Giants, I wouldn't be surprised if they did end up getting a win on us because that's just always what the Giants do, especially as a divisional matchup. But, so yeah, 4-2 and two is what I see being potentially the best outcome. Maybe 5-2, and two, but I, or 5-1, and one, but I really, really, really doubt that. Uh, the worst outcome would be 2-4. and four in my opinion, and that's where we probably lose. We lose to the Ravens. We lose to the Cardinals, um, and then we lose two out of the four games between the Browns, Panthers, Bears, and Giants. Um, realistically, let's say that we go three and three there, uh, two and one now. Then we would be five and four. So I don't think that the playoffs is something to expect this year, but I think there's a shot that we could potentially make a run for the playoffs. Um, If so, it'd be probably seventh seed wild card matchup, but we can at least hope that we are able to make the playoffs. Right now, of course, we're winning. We're the uh, highest seed in the NFC East, we're tied with the Eagles, but due to tiebreaker rules, we are technically um, ahead of them. And then 
Cowboys are one and two right now, and the Giants are uh what are they one and two? I think let, let me fa- uh, fact check that. Actually, NFL standings. So I I know that we and the Eagles are two and one, and then yeah, the Cowboys and the Giants, as I said, are both one and two. Uh, again, Cowboys have the tiebreaker, I guess. But, of course, anything can change in this division. Hopefully, we are able to maintain that spot, although I, I truly doubt it. I believe, obviously, that the Eagles are going to finish at that one seed. Probably Cowboys 2, us 3, and Giants 4. But we'll have to see. With that, we're going to have to wrap up this episode. Overall, just such a fun episode to make because I was – able to uh really be proud of this team for once you know again against the uh the buccaneers i wasn't quite happy with that performance we've been a losing team in the past but there's just hope now and it brings excitement not just to me but every single commander fan what can Jaden daniels do the possibilities are endless there's just a lot of excitement a lot of hope for this team will definitely be a contending team, in my opinion, in a few years. Work on some spots that need help. Cornerback room, maybe defensive line, defensive edge, stuff like that. But soon enough, this team will be a very good team and a big threat in the NFL. Uh, Jaden Daniels, amazing. Excited to see how he continues to play. But with that being said, That's going to wrap up the fifth ever episode of On the Gridiron. As always, I'm your host, Matthew Heiserman, and we will see you next time.